Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at arithmetic sequences, so we can answer questions from exercise 3a. So first of all, what is an arithmetic sequence? An arithmetic sequence is a sequence which increases or decreases by the same value each time. So in general, if we start at a term a and we have a common difference d that we either go up by or go down by each time we move on one term in the sequence, then algebraically this is how it's going to look. The first term is going to be a, so we're going to give a separate letter to the first term. And then the second term is going to be a plus the common difference of d. So the second term is a plus 1d. And the third term is going to go up by the same amount as the first term did to the second term by another d. So from this term to this term we added on the common difference of d. d could be negative, but in this case we're going to just write it as an algebraic value. Um, so in this case here, the, for an arithmetic sequence, it has to go up by the same amount each time. So in this case it's a plus 2d. The fourth term is going to be another difference of d from... Uh, the third term to the fourth term, and this is going to make it a plus 3d. Now if we carry this on up to the nth term, then just try and spot the pattern here. If we've got 4, fourth term gives us 3 values of d, third term is 2 values of d, second term is 1 value of d, first term is no d's, so the nth term here is going to be a plus m minus 1 lots of d. Okay, so that's how we can work out effectively an nth term rule for any given sequence using that formula. So you need to be able to know this formula here and apply it in a problem solving question. Uh, so let's have a go at one of these then. So uh, the question here gives us 6, 20, 34, 48, 72. Part A is find the nth term. So that's going to be finding the A plus M minus 1 lots of D. Um, and substituting in a and d. So it would be a good idea to start off wor with working out what a and d are. In this case, a is the starting term, always the starting term, and d is the common difference. We can see here we're adding on 14 each time, and you can check all the way down the sequence that we're going to do that. So d is 14, that's what makes it an arithmetic sequence, because it has a common difference. Now substituting a and d into your formula, we get 6 plus m minus 1, that's at 14, n we don't know, we're working out the nth term, so we get here 14n minus 8. Now what's this funny symbol at the front of it, u subscript n? Well effectively what we've done here is we've given all of our terms in our sequence effectively um, a u number effectively. So u number 1 is 6, u number 2 is 20, u number 3 is 34, and this goes on and on and on and on. u n is given by 14 times the n number that you're currently at minus 8. So effectively here the n number represents what the sequence, the, the position in the sequence you're at, um, so we can just times that by 14 and minus the 8. Moving on to the next part of the question, find the first term in the sequence that exceeds 200. So what we need to do here is we need to set up an equation of 14n minus 8, which is the generic nth term of a sequence, um, is bigger than 200. And now we'll solve this equation. Just bear in mind that the solution of this equation is going to be a whole number or the lowest whole number that satisfies this inequality. So in this case here, we've got n is bigger than 14.857. So this here, if we want it to be the lowest or the first term that exceeds 200, n has to be the 15th term. Okay, so find the first term, so it's going to be the 15th term. Okay, let's have a look at another question then. Uh, and in this case here, our sequence is um, decreasing each time. It looks like it's decreasing by 7 each time. So in this case here, the d value is going to be minus 7. And the starting term is the starting term in our sequence, which is 101. 
So finding the nth term of this equation, this sequence here, is just as simple as substituting the numbers into the equation. And here we get 108 minus 7n. For part b, we're looking for the first term in the sequence that is negative. So what we'll do is we'll set up our equation to be less than 0. And now let's go ahead and rearrange and solve this equation. Here we get n is a bigger number than 15.42. Now in this case here, to find the value of n that will give us the first negative term, we don't just round normally, we round to a number that's bigger than 15.42, that is a whole number. And in this case here, it's the 16th term in this sequence that will give us a negative term. Okay, so a sequence is generated by the formula un equals a plus n minus 1, that's a d, so it's an arithmetic sequence. Uh, given the third term in our sequence is 5, and given that the eighth term in our sequence is 20, find the values of a and d. So that's how you read this bit of text here. When it says u subscript 3, that means the third sequence in our, the third number in our sequence, and this here means the eighth number in our sequence. Now if you can remember, the third term in a sequence will have two lots of d added on to a. So what we can do is we can make two simultaneous equations out of what we've got here. 5 is going to be the third term in our sequence, so it needs to be a plus 2 lots of d. And 20 being the eighth term in our sequence needs to be a plus 7 lots of d. Notice here how for the third term we need 2 lots of d, and for the eighth term we need only 7 lots of d. So always one less than the, d, than the term you're at for the d value. And now we've got two simultaneous equations here. So we call this equation 1 and equation 2. Uh, let's calculate equation 2 minus equation 1, so we get 15 minus 5d, so it equals 5d, so we get uh, d is equal to 3. Let's now go ahead and find a by substituting d equals 3 into one of the equations, and we get a is minus 1. So the sequence starts at minus 1 and goes up by 3 each time. All right then, your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here then. So in the first question, write down the first four terms in the sequence, and for question five, it's a bit of simultaneous equations again. So pause the video and try these two questions out. All right then, so let's have a go at question A then. So we're just working out the first four terms in this sequence. So U1, substituting in 1 into this formula here, is going to be 7 u2 substituting in 2 into this equation here is going to give us 12 and we can see here that the number that's in front of n is effectively going to be our common difference each time so I can fill in the next couple just from those facts. Part b is going to be roughly the same type of question u1 is going to be 7.5 u2 is going to be 8, u3 is going to be 8.5. We're effectively just substituting this n number at the bottom here into the formula that we're given. And then u4 is equal to 9. So this is the list of the first sequence, and this here is the list of the second sequence. Part 5, or question 5 here, a sequence is generated by the formula un equals p times n plus q, where p and q are constants given that u6 equals 9 and u9 equals 11, find the constants p and q. Well, we're told the, uh, the style of the sequence that we're looking for here is p, n plus q, so let's just substitute the numbers in and set the equal to the answer. So u6 here is going to be 6p plus q, and this number in the sequence is going to be a value of 9. And for the ninth term in the sequence, so let's make this 9p plus q, is going to give us a value of 11 in the sequence. So let's go ahead now and do um, u9 take away u6. So in this equation here, it's going to give us 3p equals 11 minus 9, which is 2. 
So P is two thirds, that's the common difference in this sequence is two thirds. And then let's go ahead and um, substitute into one of the equations to work out what Q is. So six times two thirds plus Q equals nine. Uh, that's 12 over 3, which is 4, so 4 plus Q equals 9, and Q must therefore equal 5. Okay, so a classic way of incorporating simultaneous equations into a arithmetic sequence question is to give you two terms in the sequence, and then you've got to work out the A value and the D value. Okay, so this is um, the first um, the first exercise in chapter three. So pause the video and try a couple of these questions out. Thanks for watching.